The story you're about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts about historical characters, events, or locations. Please sit back and listen as I narrate this story to you. Philip. Philip, are you there, Philip? People have been fascinated by what happens after we die since the beginning of time, and many believe in ghosts or apparitions. Some paranormal and psychical researchers, however, believe that the appearance of ghosts is simply the result of extreme belief in their existence, bringing something that doesn't exist to life through sheer mental power. The Philip experiment sought to determine whether a group of people could conjure up, materialize, and converse with a completely fictitious spirit. What happened during the experiment piqued the interest of at least two horror films, 2012's The Apparition and 2014's The Quiet Ones, made more than 30 years later. In 1972, the Toronto Society for Psychical Research, or the TSPR, set out to manifest a fake apparition using the theory that poltergeists and other ghostly occurrences are creations of the human mind. The group of eight people, led by Dr. A.R.G. Owen, created a fictional man who lived a relatively short life full of despair before committing suicide. Through their shared belief in him, the TSPR then worked to bring this false ghost into our world. The group wanted to prove that all of the hallmarks of a ghost encounter – knocks, moving objects, a sense of electricity in the air – were self-delusions created by like-minded people willing such things to happen. Dr. Owen, a parapsychologist, and his wife, Iris, were among those involved in the experiment. Iris was a nurse who volunteered in social work but had no psychic abilities or training. Dr. Owen's wife, a former Mensa chairperson, an industrial designer, an accountant, a housewife, a bookkeeper, and a sociology student were among the members of the Owen group. Dr. Joel Witten, a psychologist, rounded out the group by simply sitting in and observing the experiment. The first task for the group was to create a fictional historical character. They created Philip Ailes Ford and placed him in the mid-1600s. In his false life, Ailes Ford was an English aristocrat married to an icy and cruel woman named Dorothea. He was a king's ally who fought in the English Civil War before falling in love with a young traveler girl named Margot, whom he housed in a home on his property. When Dorothea discovered the affair, she accused Margot of witchcraft and burnt her at the stake. Aylesford was unmoored by the loss of his love and committed suicide at the age of 30 in 1654. A group member also sketched a portrait of Aylesford with the help of all participants. The experiment's second phase was contact. In September 1972, the group began their sittings, which were informal gatherings in which they discussed Philip and his life, meditated on him, and attempted to visualize their collective hallucination in greater detail. These settings, which were carried out in a fully lit room, lasted about a year with no results. Some members of the group claimed to have felt a presence in the room on occasion, but there was no evidence of any communication from Philip. As a result, they altered their strategy. The group decided that replicating the atmosphere of a traditional spiritualist seance might yield better results. They deemed the lights, sat around a table, sang songs, and surrounded themselves with pictures of the type of castle they imagined Philip would have lived in, as well as period objects. Everyone at the table agreed to concentrate on Aylesford and the supernatural without feelings, as if they were forcing anything to happen. Another rule was to accept whatever happened with an open and unfrightened mind. The group claimed that after the appropriate changes were made to the atmosphere, they were rewarded for their calls to Aylesford with a distinct knock on the table one night. The group asked questions of the supposed apparition in their midst and received responses from it using the standard one knock for yes and two knocks for no method. Because they asked Philip, they knew it was him. The table wrapping communication allowed the group to learn more about Philip's life. He even appeared to have personality, expressing his likes and dislikes, and his strong opinions on various subjects through the enthusiasm or hesitancy of his knockings. During the seances, participants claimed to have felt breezes in the room and across the table. 
They claimed the table shifted and tilted. They also claimed it tried to leave the room once and got stuck in the doorway. This table allegedly balanced itself on one leg and slid easily across the thickly carpeted floor. People heard voices and felt vibrations during the seances, even though the group was allegedly searched for contraband that could be used to fake responses from Aylesford. Furthermore, the lights would flicker on command and then stop, perplexing some. Yes, Aylesford responded to questions with his knock, but his responses were very limited in scope. Although he could accurately answer questions about events and people from his time period, it did not appear that he knew anything that the rest of the group did not. In other words, Philip's responses came from their subconscious minds. This means that the group seance extracted all of the biographical information written by the participants from the entity, but anything else was found to be contradictory to real history. Some members claimed to have heard whispers in response to questions, but no voice was ever recorded. Within all of that, the ghost of Aylesford allegedly had the ability to manipulate events through psychokinesis. The lights would dim instantly if the group asked Philip to do so. He would comply if asked to restore the lights. The table where the group sat was almost always the focal point of strange occurrences. They asked Philip if he could make a cool breeze start and stop at will after feeling it blow across the table. He could and did it. The group noticed that when Philip was present, the table felt different to the touch with a subtle electric or alive quality. A fine mist formed over the center of the table on a few occasions. Surprisingly, the group reported that the table would occasionally become so animated that it would rush over to greet latecomers to the session or even trap members in the corner of the room. The TSPR eventually decided to hold a seance in front of a 50-person audience with cameras set up to record everything for a documentary. Fortunately, Philip did not have stage fright and exceeded expectations. Aylesford allegedly levitated the table about half an inch while answering questions with a single knock for yes and two for no. Unfortunately, the cameras did not capture this phenomenon, but everyone in attendance claims to have witnessed it. As in previous seances, the lights flickered and the table moved under the group's hands. Overall, the Philip experiment was a success that came to an end when one of the participants allegedly told Aylesford, We only made you up, you know, effectively ending the appearances. Despite the fact that Aylesford never appeared for the group, the experiment was deemed a success and TSPR repeated the experiment with different participants. Lilith, the imagined French-Canadian spy, made herself known at seances in five weeks. Later, a false ghost named Sebastian, a medieval alchemist, revealed himself to the TSPR. They also created Axel, a man from the future, and experienced phenomena during seances with him. A group in Sydney, Australia attempted a similar test known as the Skippy Experiment. Skippy Cartman, a 14-year-old Australian girl, was created by the six participants. According to the group, Skippy communicated with them through raps and scratching sounds. However, most other attempts to replicate the experiment failed due to a lack of a control variable, the difficulty of conducting a proper seance, and other issues that did not allow for scientific experimentation. While some would conclude that they prove that ghosts do not exist and that such things exist only in our minds, Others believe that our unconscious is sometimes responsible for such phenomena. They do not and cannot prove the absence of ghosts. Another point of view is that, while Philip was entirely fictitious, the Owen group actually made contact with the spirit world. Some believe that a playful or perhaps demonic spirit took advantage of the seances to act as Philip and produce the extraordinary psychokinetic phenomena recorded. In any case, the experiments demonstrated that paranormal phenomena exist. And, as with most such investigations, they leave us with more questions than answers about our world. The only certain conclusion is that much of our existence remains unexplained. Hey everyone! I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took time out of your day to listen to my narration. This is Nikki of Twisted Mind, and I'd like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Salamat.